Welcome to the Medical Moment at Marina Hills Animal Hospital. Today we're going to talk about vaccinations, why they're good, and what happens when they go bad. Okay, so the reason that we vaccinate pets is because there's bad things in the world. Some of them are viral infections and some of them are bacterial infections. And very clever people have created vaccines against many of these important infectious agents. The purpose of a vaccine is to give the phantom of something bad to allow our pets to form antibodies against that agent so that if the real thing ever comes along, they're protected. Uh, the most important vaccines that we give to dogs is the distemper and the parvo vaccine uh, and rabies. Cats, the most important vaccines are in the FVRCP, the P, the panleukopenia, and the rabies vaccines. Uh, and it's very important that pets get these needed vaccines on a schedule that matches their need, which means a series when they're little, a booster a year later, then once every three years after that. There are a lot of other vaccines available which we recommend pets receive if they need them. Uh, not all pets need every vaccine. So, uh, Bordetella is a bacterial infection. It is very common. It's spread when dogs get together and cough on each other. And because we have so many dogs in the neighborhood, we routinely vaccinate against Bordetella. There is a similar, ape now, but if your pet, your dog never meets other dogs because they primarily are at home, sleeping on the couch, looking out the windows, their risk is very low and maybe they don't need a Bordetella vaccine. Um, similarly, there is a viral infection called influenza, the dog flu, that spread the same exact way as Bordetella, the same risk group. Dogs that get together and cough on each other. Bordetella is common, influenza is rare, and so we tend to vaccinate only the most social pets for influenza. If they're going to a kennel, if they're getting their hair done, if they're going to dog shows, then they're at risk. Uh, I say influenza is not common in our area, but two weeks ago I saw on a vet message board that um, there was an outbreak in Costa Mesa of in dog influenza. Dogs that had traveled from the Sacramento area had come down and there was an outbreak in a kennel. So uh, it is there, there is such a thing as influenza. Uh, also for dogs, we have vaccines against an agent called Lyme disease. Uh, Lyme is common in Lyme, Connecticut. It is not common in Southern California. It's spread by ticks. Uh, if your dog's at risk for being hit by ticks, then there's a small risk of uh, infection by Lyme disease, and we have a vaccine. But if your pet never encounters ticks, then they're not at risk and they don't need the Lyme vaccine. Uh, similarly, there is a uh, lifestyle uh, a risk by an agent called leptospirosis. Uh, lepto is a spirochete bacteria. It's spread by the urine of wild animals in moist environments. So if your dog has a chance to go camping, hiking, drink from the creek or the pond, then they're at risk for lepto and they should be vaccinated. If your dog drinks bottled water, always, then its risk is very low and it probably doesn't need a lepto vaccine. Um, so that's the story on the vaccines that we recommend and why. Uh, for kitty cats, if they go outdoors, please don't let your cat go outdoors. Uh, first of all, they have to survive the coyotes in our neighborhood and the cars, which is why we don't want them outdoors. But the cats who do live outdoors and survive, those first killers um, are at risk for being infected by uh, the viral agent uh, feline leukemia. Uh, leukemia is spread when cats fight and defend their territories, and that's what outdoor cats do. Uh, so please keep your cat indoors, but if you can't, let's vaccinate them against feline leukemia. Um, the last vaccine that we sometimes give to dogs at risk, uh, for dogs now, is uh, there is an inoculation against rattlesnake venom, a uh, rattlesnake vaccine. Uh, it does not allow dogs to walk safely through snake pits. Uh, what it does do is it reduces the chance that a dog bitten by a snake will have an anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylaxis is when the immune system over responds to a stimulus and the response is worse than the trigger. Uh, and sometimes when dogs are bitten by rattlesnakes, they go into anaphylactic shock. The purpose of the vaccine is to reduce the risk of that, uh, so it helps save lives. What, can, what dogs need that? Dogs who might encounter a snake. Dogs who live in your house and never go outside, I hope, are not encountering snakes. Um, dogs who run on trails are more likely to encounter snakes. Uh, the best way to avoid snakes is, a snake bites, is to keep your dog on a leash 
because typically the snake is going to say, leave me alone, and if you hear it in about face, then you avoid being bit. It's the dog who says, what? Who leans in and often gets bit on the face. And right here in our neighborhood, we see snake bites every, every summer, uh, it seems like. So uh, keep your pet on a leash. Um, now, uh, beyond talking about the benefits of vaccination, I want to talk a little bit about some of the negatives of vaccines. Um, the vast majority of the time, when we vaccinate dogs or cats, they have the expected reaction of uh, their immune system responding to the agent that we're giving. Uh, they may run a low-grade fever. They may feel puny and low for a day or two while their body forms antibodies. Uh, and then they're fine. Uh, and that's what we would call a normal reaction, maybe a little tenderness at the injection site. Um, sometimes uh, pets have an exuberant response to the vaccine, and several hours after inoculation, they may get puffiness or swelling either at the injection site. That's painful, that's not common, but it can happen. Or they may develop hives. Uh, hives is little bumps in the skin. Uh, they're better seen at a distance than when you're up close. Um, and that is an overreactive immune response to vaccine. But that typically responds to uh, Benadryl, some antihistamine, and time. Um, it's annoying, it is not life-threatening. Uh, rarely, but occasionally, when pets are vaccinated, they have an oh-my-goodness response. Uh, their immune system hits the panic button, and they have that anaphylactic response. Um, and that's the pet who is suddenly in shock. They're weak, they're pale, they're vomiting, they're having diarrhea. The worst reactions happen the quickest. So if a pet is responding like that within 15 minutes of, of uh, injection, they need to be right back in the hospital on IVs and getting shock therapy. Um, that's one of the reasons why I would personally never take my pet to a vaccine clinic to have them vaccinated because if there's no doctor on site, if there's no emergency uh, services available, you could have a disaster. It's quite rare, fortunately, but um, on the occasions it does happen, we absolutely want our clients right back here and we jump right on top of uh, uh, treating them for shock. Um, on the whole, my strong conviction is that the benefit of vaccines, avoiding the deadly infectious diseases of distemper and parvo and rabies for dogs, and avoiding the deadly disease of panleukopenia and rabies for cats, the benefit far outweighs the risks of the negative reaction. So that's the scoop on vaccines, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, talk to your local veterinarian about what vaccines are appropriate for your pet in your community based on the risk factors for where you live and where your animal goes.